Just a couple of quick notes on the channel before we uh, begin. Um, we're approaching a thousand subscribers. Um, I never anticipated that this would happen. It was not my intention. I'm certainly not um, trying to switch to being a social media guy where it's what I do for a living. It is not my desire. I've got a, I've got a real job. Not to say that some people don't make a real job out of this, because they do. Um, that's not what I'm trying to do. Um, it's just something that happened. Um, I felt that I should be documenting some of the things that I do or some of the ways that I do things, and it turned into this. And with that, I'm, I'm getting increasing amounts of emails, comments, people reaching out to me on Facebook forums, um, you know, I, I, I'm trying my best to respond to all of you and I want to, but you know, like I said, I, I've got a, I got a full-time job and, um, it, it consumes a substantial amount of my time to say full-time is, 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 you know, an understatement. Um, you know, I'm very dedicated and, uh, very involved at work. And, um, so this is just a side job you know, it's not even a job. It's just a, it's just a side thing that I do. I, I enjoy working on my cars. It's my stress relief. It's what I do or anything. I, as you can see, I've done all kinds of videos. It's not just car stuff, but, um, I, I you know, I, I'm going to do my best. I really am. I'm trying to respond to all your comments and questions and you're looking for advice. I, I, I promise I'll do my best, but I can't always promise I'm going to get back to everybody because it's just, you know, I have to put this as secondary to everything else in my life. So uh, with that, um, we're going to launch into um, changing out these uh, tie rod ends in the Mustang, and uh, we'll go through that whole process. So now that the shop is a gigantic mess disaster again from the carnage of finding and fixing the vacuum leak on the on the uh, on the log on the intake. Um, let's get back to what we were going to do. We were going to put new tie rod ends in this thing. So I did get the last one in. Um, I'm starting to see why some of them were more expensive than others. I think well these I think three of them were all kind of expensive and one of them was cheaper. This is a this is not the rare parts brand RP. That's the brand I'm finding out that these three are. Um, this one is probably more, it's probably from something else I would imagine that works on this one out of the four. Um, that's probably why this one's like 60 bucks and the rest of them are like 120 or 130 bucks or whatever they were. Um, so anyways, I think I am going to do these myself. Um, not that <laughs> there's nothing complicated about it. That's not the reason at all. I, I try to do everything myself, but, um, uh, you know, one of the options would be to just take it over to the, to my local alignment guy. I'm getting to know him pretty good. And, um, and, uh, having him put them in. And the reason for that would be because when I put these in, the alignment's going to be jacked just really bad. So, um, I'm, I'm probably going to give it an attempt. He's only about a half a mile down the road. So I'll probably get it as good as I can just so I can drive it and take it over there. So I've got a couple of different ways that I can approach this. Um, I need to be able to drive this thing about a half a mile after I swap these out. Um, we're going to do two things too when we align this. Um, obviously the toe is going to need to be realigned with new tie rod ends. It's going to be um, far off, but I'll explain how I'm going to try and keep it from being too far off. Um, but we're also, uh, I talked to my local, local guy, he's, he's just a little local tire shop. Um, at California Tire Company, if you're in the Los Angeles area, uh, West Side, um, he's a he's a, a small business owner. He's got two very small shops, and uh, anyways, if you're looking for tires or alignment or anything, he, he's local, you know, and uh, he could use. I'm sure he could use the business. So, anyways, um, we're gonna be taking it over to him, but I've got to be able to drive it there. Um, I'd rather not have to have him put the tie rod ends in and stuff just i'd rather do it myself anyways but uh anyhow um so what we're going to do we're going to attempt to do it's going to be a little bit more difficult but if i leave the car on the ground and remove the tie rods um, and i try my damnedest to not move the wheels much i should be able to get it pretty close um i may not be able to do it that way i may have to jack it up and remove the wheels in order to get to the outer tie rods i'm almost certain i can do the inners uh, very easily. I mean, you can see there's one right there 
and the other one is down here by the header probably a little bit more difficult to get to but you can see it down in there right there um, so I haven't decided exactly how I'm going to approach this yet but we'll take you guys along for the ride so you know what it uh, you know what it looks like so they actually have a device for for locking the steering wheel at center uh, at the alignment shop but this is how uh, we're gonna do it the hobo way here and um, I just take one of these uh, clamps that I've got you know these are DeWalt's but you know you can pick them up at Harbor China or wherever um, and uh, they're all basically the same anyways what I do is I just clamp this between the uh, it's got rubber pads on it so it won't hurt anything I, I clamp this in between the steering wheel hub and the steering column and then just give it a little bit of pressure is all it takes really now it keeps the steering wheel from turning so we know we're relatively straight you know and I can nudge it you know keep it relatively straight and then just give it another you know give it another pull and that's it it's not going to move anywhere now so at least i know that i'm relatively straight and it kind of keeps not so important that it's straight but it kind of keeps things relative um as they should be um then i can measure i'll be able to measure the toe a little bit too if i need to um it's so i it's it'll be interesting to see if i can pull this off or not now occasionally not real often i have moments where i actually use my brain and as I was thinking about this today, before I got a chance to come back to it, um, I am going to measure the distance of the toe right now. I've got the steering wheel locked, as you remember. Um, I'm going to measure it right now. And the way that I do this just at home, you know, these particular tires happen to have a flat, nice flat spot in the tread where you can hook your tape measure to. So I'm picking... I'm picking this outside. Boy, you can't see it at all. And I don't have the garage open today because it's actually freaking cold in L.A., if you can believe that. Um, but you can pick here. Yeah, you can see it. The tread. Um, I've picked this outside tread on both tires to measure my distance. Uh, this is going to get me really close. Get me really close. So uh, I'm going to measure it. We're going to see what it is. I'm going to replace this tie rod. Uh, I'm going to adjust it to have the same distance again, and then I'll go and do the other side. Now, it's not to say that the other side might not move a little bit when I go to adjust this, but it's going to be pretty close. Um, so let's take a look and see what the measurement is. So we'll call that uh, 59 and a quarter. You can't really see it. Um, might be 59 and 3 sixteenths. Call it 59 and a quarter. So I'm going to do this entirely without jacking the car up, and I'm making it harder on myself kind of purposefully. Um, <clears throat> it's very unlikely that uh, I'm going to move stuff a whole lot with it sitting on the ground. If I jack it up and try and align it, it's just going to be way off. I I'm doing this simply as a challenge for myself, folks. You don't have to do it this way. Uh, I could just as easily slap these things in and have the have the toe so screwed up that it's hardly drivable and I'm sure I could make it over to the alignment shop, but, um, I'm doing this just simply as a challenge. So, um, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pop this side off and then, uh, the inside is going to be a little bit more difficult to get to, but I think I can do it. Um, and in theory, none of this is going to move, but you know, when you're hammering on it and stuff, things are probably going to move. So it's probably just a pipe dream for me, but you know, we'll, we'll give it a try. So I'm going to take the cotter key off up here and uh, back the nut off, get my pickle fork in here and pop that guy loose. Well, so far this success story is similar to Jeff Bezos's. Uh, came off without a hitch. So, by the way, these pickle forks that have the tines on them, I believe this one is a, what's the name of that? Leslie... Less aisle. I can't remember anyways. It's that brand that every auto parts store carries. These these ones with these tines on them, they work great. Um, they just grab and hold on. That way you're not... That way when you're hitting the, the pickle fork, it's not going in and out. It grabs and then it grabs and it pops it off. Uh, it just... I've, I've owned a few of these, you know, because I've broken them before. and Those ones work the best. So I got the, uh, got the outside off. Let's try and get the inside. I'm not quite sure yet uh, how I'm going to be able to get to it, but uh, we'll give it a shot. Well, it took just a little bit of persuasion, but it wasn't horrible. 
Um, I got to check and see. I'm not sure if the steering linkage moved or not. I know that this uh, tire didn't, but I'm not sure about everything else. Um, if I didn't mention it before, these are 9 16 It's just comical how small this is uh, compared to some of the stuff that I'm used to working on. But let's take a look at what we've got here. Um, oh, yeah. You know, it's so hard to tell until you pull them apart unless they're really bad. Um, it's so hard to tell if they're bad or not. And this absolutely is. It's got very loose here. But then it, then it loads up as you push it past. So it's worn a groove into the, it's worn a groove into the socket. So yeah, they're definitely, they're, they're shot. They're worn out. Um, I was foolish to not replace them sooner. Yeah, it's grabbing. I can feel it catching. See, look at how it's locking. See? You hear that? Yeah, these are shot. So, yeah, it's it's time. It's time. They're expensive tie rods. They're the most expensive tie rods I've ever bought. Um, but definitely need to be replaced. So it doesn't look like this side moved. Um, I just don't know. It felt like, to me, when I was hammering on this, it felt like this linkage moved forward. But I, I don't know for sure, and I probably am never going to know for sure. But I'm making, making the best effort. So let's go ahead and get the new one in there. Um, let's take a look at the new and old side-by-side -side first. All right, uh, new and old side by side here. Um, everything looks correct to me. Um, if I line these up next to each other, I can see I'm probably going to have to adjust this one out a little bit. But, uh, you know, I'm really not going to know. Well, now there, see, I got them lined up like that. That's probably, it's probably very close, very close. So um, what's kind of cool about this is even though I struggle a little bit with it on the ground, I think if nothing moved... I should just be able to keep extending or retracting this until it just kind of falls into place and it's going to be pretty close. Okay, so this is what I wanted to show you. So I've installed the inner tie rod uh, into its uh, into the receiver, right? Um, and now I want to get it into this end of the knuckle over here. And you'll notice it's a little bit shy of it. Now I could probably angle it, but I've got it pretty much set to where it's straight in the tie rod. What I'm going to do is extend it by rotating the turnbuckle, I would call it. Um, you could call it the sleeve, you know, there's different names for it, but I'm just going to extend it just so it lines up and just put it in. It's going to be real close. It's not going to be perfect, but it's going to be really close. So let me see if I can, I can't get a tripod in here, but maybe I can set this up so you can watch. Okay, yeah, setting it up so you can see it's going to be really hard, but I'm going to do this one-handed. So you see I'm holding the tie rod. I'm going to rotate the collar. As I rotate the collar, it's getting closer to the receiver. So that's getting really close. I'd say right about there. Maybe just a hair more. That's pretty much where it's going to land. Now as I'm getting closer to having it up in here, you'll notice that it's too far. So, I'm going to back it up a little bit. Sorry, this is just the this is going to be the worst video I've ever made probably. And these collars, don't worry about them. We can we can loosen them. the 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 locking clamps, we can loosen them and rotate them so they're more accessible. Um I'd say that that's probably Probably pretty good right there. I almost wound up back where I was. That's pretty darn close. Um, it's not going to be perfect, but it's going to be definitely going to be drivable. So, anyways, you get the idea. So then the rest of it's pretty easy. You just get your castle nuts, put them on there, torque them down. I'm sure there's probably a spec for it. Um, you know me and my torque spec for this is uh, obviously going to be the German one. And... Uh, We'll just get it uh, get it locked in place, and uh, it'll be good to go. All right, it's starting to get real dark out here, and I did end up having to open up the garage just to give myself more room. But um, what did we say this was before? 59 and a quarter, I think it was. I might have to go back to the video and look at it, but I want to say it was 59 and a quarter. So where are we at right now? 
we did not move period it is at just shy so i think i said 59 and 3 sixteenths i think 59 and a quarter that's exactly where it is right now so we didn't move it at all um, now there's going to be some lash in the system that might uh there's lash in the linkage that is probably going to affect that um but uh that's okay it's it's going to be close enough to drive so this side's done um so we're going to grease it it's got grease uh, fittings on it we're going to go ahead and get in there and grease those up i already put the cotter keys in um and this side's done so i was just taking a look at these and the insides are more worn out than the outside uh, the outside's got some play in it that it shouldn't have it also has a weird spot probably uh, just because it's mainly where it where it works itself around and towards the center is just super loose uh, they're not what i would call bad like i've seen where you take the tie rod out and it's just floating around inside the ball and socket and there's a bunch of there's a huge gap around it it doesn't have that um but they're they're loose they've definitely got spots where they're tight and loose from just wear pattern over the years um that'll give you that kind of that floaty steering wheel you know where it kind of has a little lash as you turn left and right um that's what that's what it is with these tie rod ends so they're worn out the other thing i forgot to mention too don't forget to tighten these up um tighten the clamps up before you go and drive it because otherwise it's just going to move on you and you don't want that um so i'd say it came out pretty good um considering uh that i went through a little bit of trouble to not lift up the car i was able to maintain all the geometry i think and you know we're not going to know until we go to drive it but um i've still got to do the other side probably gonna have to do that another day just out of time um but uh we'll drive it and we'll see how close it is you know, it's a new day here at the institution for the very very nervous um so this is what i'm talking about on this side how this one is straight um, this outer tie rod on the passenger side and it's uh, probably the reason that one's only like 50 bucks because it's fit something else I'm, I'm guessing so uh, I'm just gonna pop this guy off here just like the other side um, there's really no way for me to get a tripod in here otherwise I'd, I'd take you along but I don't think the angle is going to be any good but uh, it looks to me like this side might be a little bit easier I'm probably gonna have to um, I'm probably going to have to pop the inside tie rod end. I'm going to have to pop it hammering it from the front. Um, I just don't see any opportunity to do it from the back. On the other side, I did it I did it from the, the compartment forward. Um, but this looks like it'll be opposite. And of course, this one I'll be able to get to pretty easily. So I think I'm going to call these uh, well used, maybe even worn out. I'm not going to say that they're destroyed because they're not, but... Um, I mean, it moves pretty easy. They're getting, they're getting loose. They're getting loose, and it's got some movement the other direction. It's, and it's it's finding its kind of home and center. You know, it shouldn't have a clunk in it like that. Um, that's because the inside. I think these are inner and outer balls. I think if we look at this one, it's got an inside and outside ball here, and the inside's worn out, and the outside isn't. So, I'm not sure. How much that matters or not but i mean they shouldn't be this loose they're just worn out you know the car's got 106,000 miles on it i think now um you know back then that was all you'd get out of this stuff you know designs have gotten better materials are better and and you know it's not uncommon to see suspension components go to 300,000 miles you know usually you only need to do shocks or struts and some of this other stuff will hang in there for quite some time uh, but just this older stuff, it doesn't. So anyways, I've rambled long enough. That's the old one. Here's the new one. We'll do our comparison. They look uh, the same to me. Um, I'm, obviously, I'm going to have to reel this one in a little bit. I'll probably do that right now um, just to get it close, and then we'll set it in there. So I'm just doing the same thing as I did on the other side. I hung the inside first. I just stuck it down in there, and it even sat there on its own and just put the nut on it. And then I'll... Uh, come around to the other side there and I'll line that tie rod up uh, lengthwise as best as I can just to kind of keep it neutral right we just want it to kind of slide in real easy and not be justified to the left or the right we just want that we want that tie rod in 
ball and socket as straight as possible. All right, so it's in and done, greased up, cotter keys are in, tighten the clamps. Um, it should drive relatively straight tomorrow. Uh, so what we'll do tomorrow is just out of curiosity, we'll see how well this worked. Um, either my stubbornness was worth it or it wasn't. Um, it, it was a little bit harder not having it jacked up, but I know that the wheels and stuff didn't move. So um, is it even worth it? You know, could I have just done it and made it crooked? Probably because I, I have such a short distance to drive down the street to get to the alignment shop, but it's interesting to try. So uh, anyways, we're going to go ahead and wrap it up tonight and uh, maybe on the way over there tomorrow we'll shoot some video and see how straight it drives. So yeah, overall it's not horrible. It's a little crooked but it's driving relatively straight. So perfect enough to get it down to the uh, down to the alignment shop here. It's uh, not bad at all. I will say though it's driving relatively